Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is an episode of Growing Joshua Trees from Seeds, days 1034 through 1078. I titled it as an episode on how to get rid of scaled insects from Joshua Trees because I wanted to attract some new viewers. So that's what this episode is about. Scaled insects are these horrid little warty-like growths that are all over my Joshua Tree. I didn't know what they were for the longest time. I thought they were just some kind of warts akin to a warts and moles that humans get on their skin. So I didn't bother with these for a very, very long time until, as you can see, the situation became dire. In some cases, scale insects don't kill the host plant, but I'm not going to take that risk. Their numbers have exploded over time. And I'm not even sure that these are live ones. I've sprayed triazocide, uh, kind of pyrethrin analog insecticide that's pretty mild and has a very short half-life. In the past, uh, multiple times on my plants, uh, this included, but obviously I don't think that's been working. So the first thing I'm going to do is use a floss stick. These are very cheap and typically you use them to floss your teeth, although I don't want you to think about that right now. So you're going to scrape up and down like this and it's really really disgusting because they flake off all over the place. Some of these may have been dead for a very long time. Scale insects are these parasites, bugs that stick their mouth parts into there and feed off the same spot generally forever for the whole life cycle. So as you can see it's getting everywhere. It's getting on the table. That floss is a sickly yellow looking. It's getting all over the dirt, all over the phone that I'm using to film, it's getting on my clothes and whatnot. It's just really, really disgusting. So one idea I had was to potentially just have a running vacuum cleaner and nozzle tube right next to this when I'm doing the scraping. So I just wanted to give this a try. I had never done it before because before I didn't even know what the problem was. I just thought the leaves were dying of old age, which they do in Joshua Tree. So in day 1059, um, the previous night I tried some insecticidal soap. So there are warnings in the literature not to use this on certain plants. I didn't know how the Joshua tree would react. But they say to spray it on when it's um, cold or overcast or at night because you don't want it to dry out immediately. Insecticidal soap has to be wet for it to work. So you could make your own soap sprays, but if you made one out of hand soap it would be probably considerably more dangerous. So nothing happened to my Joshua tree. I let it sit on there last night for 30 minutes then I sprayed a lot of distilled water to wash it off just to be safe because if an insect hasn't died in 30 minutes after being drowned in soap um, then it never will. So at that point it doesn't make a difference. So I'm cutting off some of these blades here they do get old naturally. You can see one on the left that's had a chunk missing. Um, that was described many, many, many episodes ago in this series. So I thought, well, why not just put this organic matter to use? It's got all the nutrients that this needs. Maybe if I burn these things with a cigarette lighter, um, I could just scatter the ash on top. I know that's a little alkaline, but it turns out these things don't burn well and it stinks like crazy. It stinks like a bad wildfire. So I just threw them away. So on day 1071 I tried using packaging tape to remove the scale insects. I didn't like the scraping and the fact that they would fly and get all over the place because they're sort of waxy. So these are armored scale insects. Um, there are armored and soft scaled insects. As far as I know, I don't know a whole lot about scaled in scale insects, but the armored ones, they crawl as nymphs to a new spot. They sink their mouth parts in, much like a mosquito or some other kind of parasite, and they start drinking and drinking like ticks. And then the difference is they never let go. They secrete um, these coverings that basically harden and serve as armored shells to protect them from potential predators. And that's what you see me sticking all over these tapes largely it's pretty disgusting I mean it's mostly 
beige, uh, yellow, and white. And I have no idea what's in there. It kind of reminds me of those white things, uh, maybe some kind of sap or pollen secreted by plants in the American Southwest. That often falls onto your car windshield and other windows or just the body paint and then it uh, requires physical removal. So that's basically what I'm doing here. Packaging tape has so many uses. It's good for just sticking things. Um, if you have any kind of bug that you want to remove, a piece of packaging tape is perfect. You can just stick the bug and wrap the tape up and throw it away. So then you're basically done. So day 1076, I went out and got some more wild dirt. I think it's a nice brown clay loam. So there's sand, which has particles that are pretty big. And then there's silt, and then there's clay. And this might be a mixture. So the existing potting mix is what I started with. I've worked with potting mix from miracle Grow for about five years, but I've decided that I want to go in a different direction and use real dirt. As many people say, a rich organic rotting matter attracts a lot of bugs. So I'm just going to layer on some clay loam and everything will sink in when I water and the whole purpose of this is the potting mix is continuously losing volume over time if you compare it to many videos ago I'm sure you'll notice that the soil level uh, dirt level so to speak was a lot higher so that's mostly potting mix I do have some maybe some trace quantities of sand you know other organic matter and diatomaceous earth in there and I layered on some wild dirt from the same spot that I got out in the wild uh, sometime last year maybe six months ago in 2017 so it's a nice brown clay loam that means it's a mixture that may be mostly clay or maybe a third I don't know um, I'd have to do lab tests or whatever to find out the exact composition but this is largely rock powder. It's inorganic, permanent material with a very tiny percentage of organic material mixed in. And I'll throw on some weeds to compost on the top. I think composting on the top is fine in a layer. You just don't want to have a ton of wet rotting stuff underneath, generating toxic sewer gases and killing the roots. and. I think uh, a clay loam will also adhere to the roots better to form stronger connections, uh, more direct connections for nutrient and water uptake. Uh, potting mix has a pretty bad record as you can see from many of my growing series. Um, it just has all sorts of drawbacks. But it's light though, so compared to real dirt, if this whole pot were filled with real dirt, it'd be about 50 pounds I imagine. So potting mix is very light. I think that's why they use it and sell it. I'm scattering the remnants of a weed I dug up while I was getting this real dirt to compost on the top. So the theory is when I shower from the top with my distilled water later, the nutrients from the decomposition will slowly leach into the soil. Of course this could also grow on its own or try to resurrect, but that's extremely unlikely in the, these positions. So as you can see there's still a lot of scale insects around. They're on the tops of some of these leaves. Uh, generally the older leaves are infested and the newer ones remain pristine for a very long time because these things don't move around. They just migrate when they're nymphs. So for these armored scaled insects, the females which can lay eggs and reproduce without even mating, um, they lay a bunch of eggs underneath their armor shell that's secreted and the nymphs crawl out to colonize the plant. So as with spider mites, it's a very vile pest. If I had recognized these for being what they were, parasites instead of warty growths, I would have taken care of the matter maybe a year or two ago. So the theory is every time I water from the top, over time after these uh, weed leaves have decomposed or whatever organic detritus I throw on top, nutrients will leak back into the soil and the soil will remain very very low in organic content although as of now the potting mix underneath is still a huge mass I imagine most of the roots are in there 
So it'll take a very long time of repeating this process to replace all of the potting mix, which will eventually rot away to nothing over many years, I imagine, depending on how wet it stays. Uh, if it stays wet continuously, then it'll decompose a lot faster than if you water very, very sparingly and it just keeps drying out, then it won't rot. So I am watering from the top and that real dirt, the clay loam, will seep in over time. So it'll have the appearance of losing volume. So it's day 1078. I'm doing the final touch up work to remove all scale insect stragglers, dead or alive. And one fun fact I read is the males of scale insects appear to be gnat-like insects, entirely different than these uh, crawling armor shelled pests that are the females and I imagine the nymphs, I'm not sure. But yeah, some of these fungus gnats that I've been seeing, they get into my apartment sometimes. Maybe they could have actually been male scale insects just looking to spread out and colonize other plants. So you learn a lot when you observe your plants closely and I'm using a lot of tape here. Well, maybe not a lot. I mean, this roll lasts forever, even though it's a small roll. But there are limitations to what you can do with this sticky packaging tape. It's really hard to get the tips there. You saw, saw me just try. You have to use your fingernail to kind of guide the tape in and press it in. Um, it's pretty hard to damage a Joshua tree like this. But it's also hard to get out all of the remaining scale insect bodies. I'm not sure if the pyrethrin analog triazocide, which is several years old, maybe it's even expired, if that did anything to these scale insects, but I'm thinking that insecticidal soap had to have killed them, or hopefully most of them. But you can never be too sure, so for aesthetic reasons, also I want to remove all of the remaining pests, or their bodies or armor shells not too sure how many of these are alive um, it's just a little mess their armored shell and it's a white or yellow secretion or some a variation in between and it just looks like uh, maybe they look like boogers or earwax or whatever it's just the most disgusting thing that I've ever encountered aside from maybe spider mites those were pretty horrible as well so it takes a lot of using the pointy serrated end of a floss stick to pick out all the ones that are at the bases of these leaves. And again, I'm not sure if everything's dead. I would have hoped so from the insecticidal soap treatment. But just to be sure, I want to knock everything loose. And I'm pretty sure once you scrape these little bugs off or their armor shells, then they're vulnerable to drying out. And then Plus you're knocking them onto the surface of the dirt. And bear in mind, these things don't really ever move. I've never seen them move. That's why I had trouble figuring out that these were insects instead of warts of some analog or something like that. So this is on fast forward. I'm getting rid of lots of these things. And then I'm going to scrape the insides of the tips of the leaves. That's typically where the infestations are worse. So by covering the surface area of the leaves, they deny the plant the light needed for photosynthesis. And by sucking out the juices, they directly feed off the plant and deny the entire plant resources and may even cause infections, cause the plant to uh, just cut its losses and just kill off the leaves to shut off their food source and shed them. So as you can see, there's all this crap. Um, dead skill insects flying out or their armored shells at least if they're long gone and it's a very painstaking process so I had to do this for all these leaves there are still 40 or more left I imagine and it's just a constant process of looking in every nook and cranny of which there are so many on a plant like this with its shape and scraping everything off to make sure that this infestation is over and that it doesn't start again. I think the insecticidal soap could definitely prevent future outbreaks, but I'll 
always have to keep my eyes peeled for any new infestations. Suppose these came from the wild, um, not from the potty mix, which I originally sterilized uh, by baking before I started this series three years ago. So as you can see, the leaf tips there are just chock full of this uh, disgusting crap. So everything requires treatment. I didn't want to trim away way too many leaves because that would uh, jeopardize the overall health of Josh which is what I call my Joshua tree, very logical choice. And I think we're basically done here. It's uh, been a lot of work, but I think it's well worth it to improve the aesthetics and put my mind at ease that I'm not gonna lose my three-year-old Joshua tree. I think with the new soil, the clay loam thrown in there on top, Eventually the potting mix will be completely replaced and the health of the plant will improve dramatically. Hopefully it'll grow faster, although I'm still limited by the amount of sunlight this receives. I can't provide a full sun environment in the wild in places like Joshua Tree National Park. The Joshua trees typically grow on a flat plateau or, or valley floor just full of sun. Um, not really near uh, mountains or on hillsides, uh, mostly just flat ground is where I see them. So that must be the conditions that they like in open sun. They're spaced pretty far apart from each other, so there's really nothing that blocks light from getting to them. So thanks for watching, and please stay tuned for new episodes.